Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have a video for you where I want to show how you can use Spark for batch processing based off of a Kafka stream. Um, so everyone knows Spark, great for stream processing, great for really you know, heavy duty analytics. It's also good for batch processing. It can do both. Um, that's kind of one of its biggest advantages is you know being able to just kind of pretty much alternate between the two based on your use case. Um, and so that is what we're going to explore today. I'm just gonna walk you through a relatively simple script that's going to basically say, hey, we're gonna read from a Kafka stream. We're going to take 10 uh, data points from that Kafka stream, and then we're going to uh, process those and then upload them into those 10 data points and upload them into Snowflake. Uh, and then potentially do this on a continuous basis. Obviously in production, you're probably gonna to wanna to have more than 10 data points in a particular batch, but I'm just trying to make it nice and easy for this example for you. Um, so we'll keep it at 10 and you, know, you can obviously extrapolate this out as well. Um, so without further ado, let's get into it. And so we'll just start by creating a new file called, call it spark batch processing. So spark batch processing.py. Um, and also, if you're looking to figure out, hey, how do I get started using Spark on my local machine? How do I get started on these? Check out my previous videos uh, where I show you exactly how you can get started setting up and running Spark on your local machine, whether just kind of as an application or as a Dockerized um, act application as well. So now that we have our new PySpark file up and ready to go, we'll import a few different functions. Um, so first, we're going to need to import our Spark session so we can actually initialize a Spark session. Uh, then we're also going to import some Spark SQL functions, uh, column, expression, and window. Um, so column references a column, expression allows us to have expressions, um, and then window basically has like a window, it will effectively take a window into a larger data set and just kind of visualize that for you. Um, and then we also have this trigger option so that we can trigger actions based off of a stream or another, act, or another uh, event occurring. So then after we've gotten our functions all in there, we'll then create a new list or a new array of our different Snowflake options. So when you're connecting to external systems within Spark, you need to basically define these arrays of, you know, in this case, Snowflake options worth all your different credentials you'll need to connect to Snowflake. So here, you know, obviously not putting in my real credentials uh, and, you know, in production, you'll probably want to use a secrets manager or something like that, but here, just import, put in raw text, your different Snowflake options for these different fields. And then you'll have this as an array, which we'll then reference later on in our uh, script to actually generate that connection to Snowflake. Then we are going to add our Kafka configurations. So here, what you're gonna put in is your Kafka bootstrap servers and your Kafka topic as well. So in this case, just referencing which Kafka bootstrap servers your Kafka environment is running on, and then the particular Kafka topic that you wanna monitor and then batch process uh, downstream. So now that we have all of our different connection variables set, we can then initialize our Spark session. So to do that, we'll just go to Spark equals Spark session builder, give it an app name, this can be whatever you want. So in this case, Kafka to Snowflake with error handling. So I'm gonna show you how to incorporate error handling into this. And then here under your Spark packages, this is pretty crucial actually. So make sure you're installing the proper packages to be able to connect to Kafka, uh, Snowflake, JDBC, um, and Spark Snowflake here. So when you're, and let me just actually scroll over a little bit here. So just so you can see the end of it, make sure you have this full uh, list down there so that you can actually connect to the requisite systems. Um, this is just something you do whenever you are starting a new Spark session and you wanna connect to anything. Um, so get to create create our Spark session, boom, done. Next, what we're going to do is define our functions when to read from Kafka. Um, so here, Spark read stream format Kafka. Um, so just telling it to, this is going to read data in the format of a Kafka stream. Um, then option Kafka bootstrap server, so just telling it uh, this is the Kafka bootstrap server we're pulling from. So this is just defining the format, and this is actually passing the actual Kafka bootstrap server. Then we're subscribing to a Kafka topic, which you're setting here. And then options starting offsets earliest. This is basically just saying, hey, when you start consuming from this Kafka stream, set your Kafka, your starting offset as zero. Um, so potentially just saying reset the index so that it doesn't keep processing the same amount of data um, and look for the earliest uh, value that you're getting right there. Then cast value a string. What this is doing is taking the value. So this value just represents any kind of data that we're processing from this Kafka stream. 
and we're just casting it as a string, so turning it into the string format. So downstream, we can take this and we have it in a format that is acceptable to Snowflake, so we can upload a string into the Snowflake database that we're using here. Um, so that's what that's doing there. And so now that we have the Spark function actually read from that Kafka stream, what I also want to do is write an error handling function for writing the Snowflake. Um, so here, what we're want, going to do is define a function for safe write to Snowflake. And then so here, we're passing in our batch uh, data frame, batch ID, and don't worry, we're going to call this in a second, uh, where we're going to say, hey, write in Snowflake uh, our dbt table, the data that we just pulled out, mode append, and you can see this batch data frame is what we're actually appending into our existing DB table. So here, DB table, and then target table name, whatever your target table is that you want to upload into Snowflake, add that here, um, and then mode append. So not overwriting it, but just adding it to the end of that target table. Um, and then, you know, you can see here, if there's an error, and this is just key so that we don't just get a silent fa failure, we'll actually get a descriptive, hey, within the error logs, error writing batch ID uh, with, the string, with the actual string entry um, of the error that occurred there. Then, after we're done with that, we have a function to process each micro batch. So here, what you'll want to do is, so now what we're going to do down here is define our actual batch processing. So here, define process micro batch. Here, we're passing in our batch data frame, batch ID. Um, and in this example, let's just say we're just bringing in names from this Kafka stream. So in this process data frame, what we're going to say is batch data frame with column first name, split the column full name um, into in by zero. So splitting it in here, column full name, and then this is what it's splitting it by. In this case, it's a space because there's likely going to be a space between your first and last name. Um, and then getting that first item zero, same thing here, but getting the second item um, and that's split, which will be your last name, and then dropping full name. So now we have two columns, first name and last name, uh, and we drop full name. So then, after with that, what we'll do is process data frame, write it into Snowflake. So here, process data frame, write, format Snowflake, with our Snowflake options we defined up there, um, then DB table, append, save, and then, you know, again, just using it, having that same kind of error handling um, when if there's any errors, writing that batch ID to Snowflake. Um, so this is kind of just a safe generic one, and this is one where we actually have some processing occur um, within our uh, upload. So after we're done with that, uh, what we can do, and so actually have it run, so you'll notice that we don't really define batch DF, um, is defining our copy data frame write stream um, into Snowflake. So here, what we're doing is we're saying Kafka data frame, um, which again, we got up here, Kafka data frame with Sparks, we read that from Kafka. Uh, then we're writing this stream for each batch. And then for each batch, we have this process micro batch function being called. So what this is going to do is have the effect of for every 10, you know, 10 entries, you're going to group them, run them through this process micro batch function, and then upload the uh, end result into our Snowflake database. Um, you can see here processing time, so trigger, it's gonna trigger every one minute to capture those 10 data points and then upload them into uh, Snowflake. And then you see option checkpoint directory. Uh, what this is, is basically kind of the intermediary location that's going to save your data before it uploads it into Snowflake. Um, so make sure that this path here, the path to a checkpoint directory is something that your Spark application can actually access so that it can use it as that kind of intermediate storage before it uploads it into your backend Snowflake database. Um, it kind of acts as a like, buffer zone before you know, that data, because it can't just upload the data directly, it has to process it and then upload it. Now, this is just kind of a basic flow, but I also wanted to show you, you know, hey, what if I want to incorporate other steps within this processing pipeline? Um, and so what I want to quickly show you is just how to add, let's say, a data quality check step to this uh, pipeline. So as we all know, can't do good data work without good data. So let's say we want to make sure that all our names that we're inputting from our stream are actually valid names and they're not nulls. So here what we can do is add a validate data quality function here, batch data frame, data frame, where here what we're going to do is use the filter function from Spark uh, to actually filter for any columns where the full name isn't null um, and it doesn't equal just a blank uh, space. And so here what we're gonna do is then you can you know, size split, assume names contains exactly one space to so make sure that there's only one space and it's not multiple names together. Doesn't really account for middle names here, but Let's just disregard that and say it's only taking first name, last name in this script. 
Um, and then the only thing you need to do to actually add that into your uh, final function, what you'd want to do is just add this validated data quality. So here, process micro batch, what we'll do is instead of using that process data frame, here we're using that validated data frame and then substitute this down here. Um, and then so you go, validated data frame, df here, and boom. So you can keep kind of stacking different layers in your batch processing pipeline like that. Obviously, you can put it all in one function. I just kind of want to show you a couple of different flavors of how you can you know, expand upon this pipeline for whatever your use case requires. Um, so I hope this has been helpful for you. I hope you've learned something new. And uh, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.